What up, what up, what up, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Let's Talk Poker Show. I am your host, I am Poker here. This episode is being recorded on 11-13-2022, which is a Sunday. This episode is set to release 11-14-2022, which is on a Monday. God bless everybody. Hope everybody has had a pretty dope weekend. If you're a poker player, I hope that you've been killing it out there on the poker field. I hope that you guys have had an even better week than I have playing poker. This week has been a little rough for me. Um, But then again, hey, that's poker. Poker is a very uh, emotional roller coaster. It's, It's a roller coaster. In itself, it has its highs, its lows, its different variants, and all that good jazz. So, you know what? I'm looking forward to this coming week. Uh, Can't wait to get back out there online and kill it. I'm very um, confident, optimistic, and I'm looking forward to making it do what it do online. Coming up uh, with the, the coming poker tournaments that... Um, I have coming up, so that's that. I um, want to give a shout out to Poker Bros. If you notice, I have a shirt here by Poker Bros. Let me show you another one that I also received. Some of their merch. I like, I love merch. I love merch. Especially good merch, Poker Bros. Um, I support them. Um, I just started playing on their app, and I also joined a club on there called the um, Bear the Bear Cave Club. So um, I'm very um, excited um, about this experience that I have embarked on with Poker Bros, as well as the club, as well. So um, yeah. So, like I said, here's the shirt once again. Just showed you the other shirt, Poker Bros. What Poker Bros is, basically they are a uh, app. A, a, they are a poker app that um, have um, different poker clubs and different poker unions on their app. And basically, you know, you can just go on the app and you can play for different clubs and different unions that they have on there for poker players. So, um, basically, it's like your online home game. Like, you have your home games here, your poker home games here, where it's basically like a online version of an actual home game with a variety of different poker clubs um, that are available that you can join. Um, and if you are familiar with any, or if you come across any that you may be interested in all you have to do is one get the poker club excuse me the poker bros app once you do that then you go through the process of uh, finding that poker club that you may have information to and go through that process of being able to join that club and you're basically in that you can enjoy you can enjoy the tournaments and experience and you know that everything that the poker bros app and clubs have to offer so shouts out to poker bros they're very popular app a very popular um in, in poker in general they um basically um they sponsor some of the premier poker players that are out there now so You know, whenever you get a chance, look them up. Look up Poker Bros. Check them out. They're on social media. I believe that they do have their own site. They got their own merch, as you can see. And um, check out Poker Bros, man. So, that's what's up. Um, How's everybody doing? Is everybody doing okay? Is everybody good mentally, physically, spiritually? All that good jazz. You know, I like to ask that question because we live in a world where, you know, everybody's out for themselves. Well, I don't, I don't want to say everybody, but mostly a lot of people are out for themselves. So a lot of people going through things, people closer to us are going through things that we would never know or even Im- imagine or, t- or begin to actually understand. So 
you know, um, I like to ask people who I know or people who I'm reaching out to, how you doing? You know, sometimes just asking that question can go a long way in life. And um, it can make, it, you, you never know what something as small as that can do for a person who thinks that nobody even gives a damn. So I hope that you're well. I hope that you're good. I hope that you are staying blessed, staying prayed up. But just know that um, God loves you. So, uh, with that being said, I wanted to, t- um, oh, also, before I forget, um, I want to thank all 100, currently, I want to thank all 174 subscribers that have sub- subscribed to my YouTube channel. I want to thank you all for doing that. Um, it's been an amazing ride, an amazing journey. I've only been doing this uh, show for a couple of weeks, uh, maybe near a month now, maybe. And the overwhelming support that I've gotten from viewers that actually take the time to watch my shows and my episodes. And, you know, if they don't comment, which I don't get a lot of comments, but I get a lot of likes. The likes and the, and and the subs um, that means a lot to me, especially as someone who is coming into this whole situation, not really knowing what I'm doing or having a direction and where I want to go with this as far as long term plans go. I'm just kind of just venturing off of just something that you know I I love, which is poker, but in a way that is outside of my own. Um, Outside of my own element, so you know it's um it's it's a blessing to know that there are people out there that are very interested in my show and what I have to offer, and I think everybody, I think each and every one hundred and seventy four subscribers from the from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. I hope that you will stay with me with this ride and see where this takes us. Continue to support the show. Um, watch the episodes when they come out, as this one will be coming out on Monday, tomorrow. And um, I I cannot express enough how much I think each and every one of you guys. And if this is your first time watching this show, um, hey, welcome. Um, if you're a poker fan or poker player, welcome even more because I'm definitely trying to reach out to you guys to watch this show and this platform because this show is basically dedicated to poker players and poker fans. It's just a way of reaching out to those people who love poker like I do and just having a, um, a show, a presence, something that represents poker and you know, it, it's nothing fancy, it's nothing, you know, uh, that's going to wow you. It's just a show, a place where you can just come back, listen to the topics, listen to the conversation, and just participate. And that's just, you know, our way of dialoguing back. This is our way of dialoguing back and forth between one another, especially as poker players and poker fans. You know, just to have some 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 uh, great conversation and some good times so i appreciate you um what i would like for you to do as well as my existing subs is please like this video uh, on the last video i did i made a goal that i wanted to get 500 likes because i tried to ask for a thousand likes that seemed like that may have been too much so i said let's go for 500 likes my last video currently is at 493, so I almost got to 500, but not quite. It's been kind of stuck at the 493. And if you haven't saw that video or like it, it's still my that video is um is very much very excuse me it's still available. You can go check out the video, and more importantly, you can still like that video to help me get to that 500, as I'm just seven off from getting it. In the meantime. For this video, we still got the same goal. We want to get that 500 likes or more. So if you like what you see, if you just want to come and show your love and support, all it takes is one click. One click. Just click click the like button. Help me get to that 500. Um, that would be um, very, very important to me. And, and I would not take that for granted 
at all. So the goal for this video, let's get to 500 likes or more. I would greatly appreciate that. Also, su subscribe to the channel. I'm at 173, excuse me, 174. Let's keep this subscription thing going, especially if you like this if you like this sort of content that I'm bringing to the table, especially for my fellow uh, poker players. What I need you to do is real simple. Hit the subscribe button, but don't stop there. Hit the notification bell, but don't stop there. Last thing, once you hit the notification bell, hit the word that says all. When you do that, then you set, you begin each and every one of my content. Whether it's a short, a video, or just a regular post, you get it all. It, um, the last part is very, very important, which is hitting the notification button and, and hitting the word all. That is the most important thing that I need because that guarantees you, me, that you're going to get everything that I post out because I want you to get all my material. So if you don't hit all and you hit subscribe and notification bell, that's fine, but that doesn't guarantee you're going to get all my all, all of my stuff. And I'd rather you get all of it than get some of it and be limited. So just do that for your boy. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, getting on to the topic of um, this episode that I want to talk about. Uh, and this is definitely dedicated to my poker uh, people out there who will know what I'm talking about. Um, in today's poker world, in today's poker landscape, you know, you have a lot of poker players now that they have resources and things that are made of more available to them than they than they were maybe I don't know 10, 20 years ago maybe. Um, there are a lot of things that a lot of there's a lot more information now, a lot more resources and things now that help uh, to prepare and educate poker players on how to be winning poker players or at least to give it a good run and to basically understand um, hands understand the value of certain hands, how to play certain hands, when not to play them, when to call, when to fold, um, how to play aggressively, how not to play aggressively, what hands are good hands, if two tens are a great hand to play, how would you play them in such a such situation, all that stuff. So nowadays you have a lot of that um you have a lot. You have a lot of content and a lot of things that are made available for for poker players now to kind of help them get ahead on when they are playing either cash games or tournament play. Um, you have things called GTO. That is basically um, GTO is I'm trying to find game theory. Game theory tomorrow. GTO, Game Theory Optimal, basically. And basically what that is, um, GTO Poker Strategy aims to avoid the exploitation that could happen if you make a specific play either too frequently or not frequently enough. So basically, um, it's GTO is like a, it's like a poker theory strategy. Um, that helps to prepare poker players on how to play a certain hand and how to um, if how to avoid being ex exploited by certain players. So what I mean by ex exploited, basically, see how can I put this? If a player is watching you. And how you play your hands or certain or a certain hand at the poker table. If they see you doing a certain pattern with a certain hand or just how you or your or your mannerisms and how you play certain hands or whatnot, that player when they have a hand against you and when this is you and them heads up in a pot, they're able to exploit your weaknesses or 
explore certain tendencies that you have in hand to get an advantage on you where that they can not only win the hand but also get more but I grab more chips from you and if it's a cash game more money from you cash as well so um base it the best way i can put gto is kind of like music theory if um if there's anybody out there that is a musician or no musicians or been around some um some um some um musical artists that may be into music and they um they're in school for it and they say they have to take something called music theory it's kind of like a it's kind of like a it's almost like a course, you know, in bettering you in the confines of music. And in this case, it also betters you in the confines of poker in certain, in certain ways on how to just be a better poker player and learn, I guess, poker from a different, um, a different way, a different method, if I'm making any sense. So, um... That's, and GTO has been used a lot. I hear a lot of uh, poker players uh, say that they use that theory a lot in playing poker and becoming a better player. And, you know, it's a very uh, popular uh, thing that, that a lot of poker players nowadays get into. You also have something called uh, solvers. Solvers are basically, and I'm kind of looking over my notes as I uh, get this because I want to make sure I'm getting this right. But poker solvers are basically, they're like charts, um, online type software charts and whatnot. And basically what those solvers are, they're basically, they're like charts that, that show you how to play different hands. They show you how to play those hands, what hands are best to play, in what position, um, how to bet, how not to bet, how aggressively you should be betting. Like it gives you, I think that's even more detail than the, um, than the GTO thing. I think, I, you know, I'm more familiar with this stuff to a certain point. Cause I don't really use I don't really use any of it. I don't use the GTO. I don't use the solvers. But I do have somewhat of a somewhat of a very limited understanding of what these things are and how they have affected poker as well as how they have helped a lot of poker players so supposedly and how they play certain hands and and how they um, have have a better grasp on the game when it comes to tendencies and stuff like that. So that's what um, basically poker solvers are. They're like charts and things that uh, you know help you understand how to play hands, how to bet, all that stuff. So like for, I give you an example. So if I'm in a hand, let's say I'm going Heads up with somebody. Now, this is just an example. Don't quote me and don't hold all this. Don't hold me accountable for all this if I'm if I'm not saying it 100% right. Because again, I have a limited understanding on this, but somewhat what well, that I can understand the the basic of where it's coming from. So let's say I have my cards are 10-7. Ten of hearts, seven of diamonds, and my my opponent that's across from me. Let's say he has a jack six. We go with jack six. They um, yeah. Well, we we'll go with jack six, and let's say the board comes up. Uh, I don't know two, five, four. I'm just throwing it out for example. Well, the first thing I'm gonna be thinking in my head, um. When I watch the GTO, what does GTO say about playing this hand, or what does my solver say about playing this hand? Should I should I bet? Should I not bet? Should I be aggressive with this? That's how the GTO and that's how the solvers play until when a person plays each hand, because a lot of poker players that really swear by this stuff and really study it. 
they they have studied it to a point where they have a pretty good understanding based off of their knowledge and their um, information of studying this sort of stuff. They have a bet. They have a understanding on how they should play that particular hand because that hand, according to their charts, tells them they should do this, they should do that. So they automatically knows when they get that hand if they should even play it, fold it, or if they do play it, how should they go about playing that hand to get the results that they want to get if they're even able to get anything out of the hand. So that's what um, that's what that is basically. Um, that was just a prime example of you know the whole solvers thing. So I guess my question is, you know, um, when it comes t- to poker, um, a lot of a lot of the young guns they're really um, taking they're really taking poker seriously, and they. They're taking it seriously to the point where they are um, they are really taking the time to study the hands, to study these charts. Like they're really treating this like this is like this is um, college or, or some sort of uh, education course, and they really you know taking upon themselves to study the charts, to study this stuff. Like this is this is a course for them. And, you know, it's making a, a lot of poker players. It's making them um, very good poker players, maybe even better poker players than what they were. Some of them really swear by this stuff. So my question is, as a poker player, if you're somebody who is into this stuff or not, do you think GTO and solvers and poker, do you think that they are ov- overrated? Or do you think that they are, you know, the end all, be all, and really being a great poker player? Um, that's my question to you, especially if you're in the poker like I am, and you play as much as I do, if not more, and you really invested into the game. Um, my response is, I do think that the GTO and the solvers and stuff like that, I do think that they are a tad bit overrated. The reason why I think so is not that I don't think that the stuff that the stuff actually works because I'm like this. Anything that can help you get a better understanding on the game and that can improve your chances on playing better at the table, I'm all for it. You know, it's 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 always great when you have tools and things out there that are legitimately good. And great for what you're trying to pursue when you're trying to pursue greatness in whatever it is that you're doing. How, however, at the same token, when it comes to this topic, you know, I don't think that, again, it's the NRB all on you being a great poker player or a good poker player. Um, There are people out there that, that don't do GTO, don't mess with prop they don't mess with solvers at all and they are highly great poker players they're highly successful poker players uh feel feel hear me is is one player that comes to mind i know he gets criticism for not even trying to get into that because that's more so the new school way of doing things when it comes to bettering your game but you know, he's still one of the greatest of all time, and it's not just for, from his past work, but it's also for what he does now. And he seems to be still one of the best out there that um, does it, even even on the level that he's on now and during these current times of playing poker. Uh, Phil, what's the other one? Phil Ivy, that's another one. I've heard him, you know, I've heard him on different um, interviews say that he doesn't really, you know, do the GTO thing. He's never spoke out against it. Like, he's just, he doesn't really mess with it because of whatever. I think his reason was more so he never really had the time to get into it. But again, even with somebody as great as Phil Ivy, 
This guy is definitely known as one of the greats and, and still out there killing it, even right now, and doesn't really do a single GTO thing or a solver's thing, but this guy is killing it with his his poker, his current poker, poker style on how he represents and also how he plays the game. So, no, I just tell that to say, um, poker is... It's a roller coaster. Poker is a hard game to figure out. Poker is a game to me that I don't think you will ever figure out, and I don't think it's meant to figure out because there's so many moving pieces, there's so many moving parts in the game, and it's for, and it's so unpredictable, you know. And you can never really gain a full edge in poker. It, it's not one of those things or games where you can figure out to a point where you can get an advantage on a consistent basis and win. Poker is not built like that. Poker, to me, is one of the rare things in life where it's too unpredictable and you you don't have an advantage for long. Does it take a lot of skill to play the game of poker? Yes. It takes skill. It takes common sense. It takes practice. It takes work. All those things it definitely takes along with um, patience, um, which is to me probably the, the number one thing that you have to have other than all those other elements. You have to have patience in this game to really su- succeed at a high level. But with me, But with that being said, you have to have all those things, but poker is the kind of game that even if you have all of those things, there's never a guarantee that you're going to win a hand. There's never a guarantee that you can play a certain hand every way that you are supposed to play, GTO or not, solvers or not, and you can still lose that hand to a weaker hand or a weak bluff or a strong bluff. Or whatever, because poker is not built based off of your knowledge and your understanding on trying to master that. Poker is just built different. It's a it's a different animal. It's a different beast, which is why we love and sometimes we even hate the game because as good as it can be, it can be just as just as um, brutal and makes no sense. And how things happen at the table, that's just poker. You know, I mean, I don't know no other way to really uh, break it down and explain it. That That's how um, cake, that's how chaotic and a- explosive poker is. So poker, to me, will never be a game where you're going to be able to fully figure out and fully understand why things are. Because I, I think poker was really... C- created that way it was created for it to always it was created for it to be a ride and adventure a roller coaster it was it was event it it was made to be a journey that you just go on and however it wherever it takes you that's just where it's going to take you it may take you here. It may take you there. It may t- it may take you on a high. It may take you on a crash and low. It may take you in between. If you're in this game and you play pl- and you play poker, you will come to understand that nothing's guaranteed in poker, and that being the best poker player is not always tangent on how well you play and how much that you know. A lot of it is just it it depends on the luck of the cards and how the cards come whether they're gonna come in your favor or they or they're not gonna come in your favor and you can you can be the best poker player in the world and play certain hands the same way and you can still get your head beat in meaning you can still lose that's just poker so I think that the GTO and the solvers are good ways to help anybody who is willing to invest their time and their um, their time and their efforts and want to be a, a better 
poker player. I think that those things are good for that. But those things, they don't guarantee that you're going to, um, you know, solve poker or be the greatest player ever to live in, in, in um, poker. Um, I just don't agree with that. Now, just because I've never dig, just because I've never dibbled and dabbled into that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't know what I'm talking about because I've been playing poker for a number of years locally for the for the most part and just recently a lot more online and I've done pretty well for myself I I, I would say I, you know I've done pretty well without having to do solvers and I like my poker play it can always be better and I, I I do always strive to be better in each tournament in each game that that I that I play but none of that you know he finds me as a poker player as far as how great I could be if I was doing solvers or GTO. You know, I just think GTO and solvers is another way that it's an, it's another uh, thing out there that can also help you, but it doesn't guarantee you the success that some people swear by in the poker in the poker community and in the poker world. So. That's just my two cents on it. Um, again, I'm not speaking against poker solvers, and I'm not speaking against GTO. I just, you know, I I just think people need to pump the brakes a little bit when they when they go swearing by these things and, and saying that if you don't do these things, you'll never be a great poker player or you'll never be as good as you want to be. I don't agree with that. Uh, the the one unique thing about poker that makes poker such a great card game and a great game in general is that you have different unique styles that people play with some people play super aggressive some people play super passive some people just uh crazy local with it whatever the case may be there are different unique styles of play within the player and those things help shape the game into what it is, and it helps even expand upon the um, turbulence and the roller coaster that put that poker takes you on. Because there's so many different characters, there's so many different personalities, there's so many different styles of poker that is in play. That it's just it's just a very un it's just, it's a very unorthodox game. And you know you just you just you just don't know what to what to ex- expect when it comes to poker. So you know that's my two cents on it. If you are a poker player, a poker fan, or whatever when it, when it comes to poker, please I would love to hear your comments on what you think of my uh, opinion on this topic. Cause I do know there's some people that poker players that are very opinionated about this topic they they uh, swear by certain things and they believe what they believe and um i would just i would like to honestly know what are your thoughts on it and how do you feel so with that being said i'm gonna bounce this this is the fifth episode uh, I thank you for watching. I thank you for listening. More importantly, please hit that like button. I would appreciate if you hit that like button. Help me get to 500 likes finally on this video. The other video has 4, uh, 493 from the last video. Go back and watch that video. Give me them seven likes I need for 500 there. But on this one, definitely hit that like button. Let's run it up. Let's get the 500 likes. Subscribe. Let's get let's keep the subscriber thing going. I'm liking what we're doing right now. We're at 174 currently at the time that I record this. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And more importantly, when you hit the notification bell, hit the word all. I thank you all for your time. Your love and support does not go unnoticed. You guys have a great week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend or whatnot. And may God bless you all. Peace.